Hi, everybody. It's Jamie Lee Curtis, and you're here with the AFI Movie Club. And I wonder what movie we're talking about. Oh, that's right. Happy Halloween, everyone. It's Halloween, 1978, directed by John Carpenter, co-written by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill, produced by Deborah Hill, and starring yours truly. And it was my first movie and the time of my life. And I'm so excited that we're going to watch a scene from the movie and talk about it. So stay tuned. Any of you all right? <laughs> this is that moment in the movie where the audience is way ahead of me. Are you fooling around again? I'll kill you if this is a joke. This graphic, horrible, violent act is taking place. And I think it's a joke and a prank. And so the audience at this moment is so completely freaked out that this main character in the movie has just been killed. And Lori is obviously confused, concerned. There's a little, you know, suspicion. But obviously she doesn't know that something nefarious has taken place. That really was frustrating for the audience, which is why John so beautifully constructed it that way. You see how curly my hair all of a sudden got? That's because I had a perm right before the movie and it uh, sometimes got very curly. There she is, you know, she's looking at the kids. They're asleep. Sleep tight kids. She thinks, okay, it's fine. They're fine. I can walk across the street. I want to remind you this sort of budgetary guerrilla filmmaking part of it. The movie was made for $300,000 and it was either 17 days or 21 days. There was one trailer that had makeup, hair, wardrobe, props. There was an art department trailer and a camera truck. That was it. So there would be no score being played anywhere um, the score that was in my head was Hey 19 um, by Steely Dan, because that's when that song was popular and I was 19. Now, this is the moment that John Carpenter talked to me about being vulnerable. He said, I want Lori to be so vulnerable that people want to take care of her. And I didn't really understand what he was talking about. I was 19. But when I saw this scene in the movie theater with this cutting back and forth with the steady cam of Lori and then Lori's POV of this scary house, all the audience knows what's going on inside that house. They know who's in there and Lori doesn't. And she's just sort of curious, not particularly scared. There was a woman who stood up in Hollywood at a theater on Halloween night and screamed out, packed theater in Hollywood, screamed out during this scene, don't go in there, the killer's in there. And it absolutely showed me what John did so beautifully as a filmmaker was to explain what was happening in the house and then have this innocent, beautiful young woman approaching it and you can't help but wanna take care of her. So obviously, she rings the doorbell. There's nobody there. Mom? Linda? She goes, she looks back at the house to make sure the kids are safe. And again, we know who's in that house. We know what they've just done, but she doesn't. And the tension at this point is insane if you haven't seen this movie. The tension is crazy. So now Lori goes into the kitchen. Oh, look, now you see how clear the glass is there? It's gonna play into my conversation with you in a minute. At this point, as an actress in the movie, I have just been sort of naturally being this young woman, little bit of concern, little bit of threat, but nothing really profound. Just a sort of gentle person that John and Deborah created so that you would care about her. 
So she was sort of a quotidian person. She knit and she, her friends made fun of her. But as this sequence unfolds, the tension in the audience is so insane that it's silent. All right, meatheads, joke's over. Come on, Annie, it's enough. Most definitely stop being funny, now cut it out. We'll be sorry. This is such a beautiful shot right here. So beautifully, beautifully done by Dean Cundy. And Ray Stella is operating the Steadicam, which was a brand new technology at the time, brand new. Everybody just wanted to make a movie and make a good movie and try to make something that had beauty to it. And at the same time, you know, satisfy the trope of a slasher film. And so here's a moment which you're seeing on film. We only did one or two takes of anything. So this moment, which is so terrifying, so terrifying. It's fine, I've caught myself watching it. And that growing anxiety and understanding that this was something horrific and terribly violent and shocking. And you'll see, I have to get to the corner and then I have to figure out a way to turn, which is about to happen. And that happens, that scared me and I even knew it was coming. And then here with the cabinet opening, and the same thing. And now we're outside. I'm by the banister and this amazing shot. To me, this is the movie right here. Right here. <laughs> Boom. The reason why it's so amazing is the length of time before the light comes on. It's negative space, but the audience kind of already knows he's there and it's just exquisite. <laughs> there are no stunt people. Going over the banister, there was a grip waiting for me underneath it and there was a rope around my wrist. Obviously very intense. Move, Lori, move your ass, get going, hurry up, because he's coming. Oh. Now I go back to the window where I was, but oh, look, there's a piece of very milky glass next to me. I wonder what's about to happen. See, oh, that milky glass. It's because it was a low budget movie and there was no money for special effects. And so it was a milky piece of glass that is gonna about to get smash owed once Michael comes in, obviously for the audience, incredibly nerve wracking. That moment coming around the side of the house is when I really became a horror movie actress. I had never screamed a day in my life. I had never rehearsed it. I had never practiced how you scream. This happened live. I remember standing behind that house, kind of jumping up and down, trying to get winded and hearing that sound of we're rolling, we're rolling. And then them going like, now, from that moment on in that movie, I was in the moment. And I'm thrilled to have had that opportunity in my life. And again, couldn't have had any part of my life I wouldn't have without John and Deborah and Halloween and the fans and you guys, people who love that movie gave me everything in my life. So thank you.